Cruise news time. Well, we got a crew member speaking out. Ten things they wish that passengers would not do. Do you do these things? Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news updates. Well, I thought we'd take it on the lighter side today. It's Sunday, August the 22nd, 50 years old. How about that? That's a trip. Uh, I, I've completed my 50 uh, turns around the sun, as it were, and uh, I'm a little reflective today, and I didn't want to go too deep into some cruise news, so I found this interesting article on uh, Yahoo Insider, uh, very aptly titled, I worked on a cruise ship for six years. Here are 10 things I wish passengers would stop doing. And actually, there was, like, I'd seen a lot of these lists before. There was one that really surprised me. Uh, so we'll, we'll go through it. Let me jump into the computer, and we can take a different look at this. And uh, that, just super chill today. Uh, get ready to jump into the comments with your funny story. Do you do these things? What do you think is most appropriate for the crew? Uh, also, if you're brand new here and you like to stay up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. And look, it, it is legit my 50th birthday. And so I'll try to guilt you into it. Uh, throw a sub my way for a birthday gift. And let me know that you subscribe down in the comments if, it, if you've subscribed. Uh, that's all the pressure, though. But the, the cool thing about subscribing is you get notified when the shows come out. And it doesn't cost anything. Thank you in advance. All right. Jumping over to the computer. Here we go. This article is on Yahoo News. You can see the URL. The URL up there if you want to go track it down. Uh, this was written by Erica DePascal. And I would assume that all these pictures that we see uh, has Erica DePascal in them. And so let's just go through the list of 10. Here we go. Referring to crew members as the workers is not preferable. Uh, I did not know this. I did not know that that would be offensive. I probably said the, the workers before. I, I usually try to refer to crew members as the crew. Uh, but I, she said, the, let's see, just refer to them as the crew or the employees. I... <sighs> Does anybody have any insight? Why would the workers, why does that, like if you called me a worker here at my business, it wouldn't bother me, but I'm not sure. But uh, again, I'm not in that circumstance. I am happy to call the crew members the crew. I, I, I think employees sounds just as uh, generic as workers. So crew, crew members, they are the crew members. I, I'm down with that. I can get, I can get down with that. There's no reason to immediately ask for upgrades when the ship is full. Most of the time, there will be signage or announcements at the guest services desk on boarding day saying the ship is sold out. I did not even know this was a thing. I did not know that when people got on the cruise ship, the first thing that they did was go to guest services to see if they could get an upgrade. Have you heard of this? Have you tried this? Have you gotten an upgrade this way? I, the side story, I did get a, an email from the upgrade ferry on Princess, and I was able to upgrade my balcony cabin to a mini suite uh, for a very reasonable price. I consulted with my friend Don, who's traveled to Alaska on Princess. Uh, he said the price was very, it was $199 per person for the upgrade, which I thought since I'm cruising single, it was just $199. It ended up being $349, but uh, Jenny said that $349 was still a good deal, and so uh, I've been upgraded to a mini suite. And then uh, at the same time, my friend Don also upgraded his. He was able to upgrade his travel agent rate to a mini suite. And uh, so we are going to be uh, side by side on the Majestic Princess in Alaska. We'll be able to show you the mini suite. But yeah, have you ever jumped on the cruise ship and went down to guest services to see if you could get an upgrade? Uh, this crew member said, don't do it. It's annoying. Uh, you know, many rooms are not available. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Have you done it? Leaving dishes on the ground can be a safety hazard. Uh, there's, if there's no designated spot to put your dishes down, put them on a table. Don't set them on the floor. Don't set them in the elevator. This one makes sense to me. You don't want dishes in a weird place where people don't normally expect dishes uh, because that could be a, you know, a hazard. And, uh, yeah, this is true. If you finish your drink, it's okay to set it on a table, uh, just an empty table. The, you'll, notice it, that you'll notice it now that I've mentioned it. You'll see empty glasses on a table, and you'll see somebody come by and pick those up. Uh, the interesting thing that comes to mind for me is room service. There's always this debate when you finish your room service dishes, should you set them outside the door on the ground? Should you leave them in your cabin somewhere? It depends on the cruise line. Like Carnival Cruise Line very uh, specifically says that when you finish your 
uh, room service, you should set it on the ground, on the floor, outside of your cabin, which I think is unsightly. Uh, many of us don't like to walk down the, the hall and see the dirty dishes, even if it's covered with a napkin. But Carnival has a process. They have a whole team that comes through the halls and picks up that kind of stuff. Uh, I always try to talk to my room steward. Uh, I don't always get room service, but if I do, and I know I'm going to get it, I'll ask my room steward, hey, what's the best way to deal with these dirty dishes? I really don't want to set them out there on the floor. And so, uh, you know, they'll say, hey, just leave them on this spot in your cabin, leave a napkin over it so I know to take it. Uh, that's the way that I work it out. But in general, around the ship, if you've got a dirty dish, uh, don't lay it on the floor. It seems to uh, really have gotten to Erica and, and other crew members. Uh, this one seems crazy stupid to me. Uh, don't ask the crew if we live on the ship. Now, I guess in some world, if it's your first time cruising, you may be uh, like, how do they do they live on the ship? Do they not live on the ship? Yes, they, they live on the ship for months at a time. They're, they're not ferrying hundreds uh, of crew member, thousand crew member back and forth at the end of the day. Uh, the crew members live on the ship, and usually, if you think your cruise cabin's small, crew members usually live in multiple occupancy cabins, uh, sometimes smaller than the guest cabins, depending on what their job is. Uh, some crew members may have better cabins. It may be different now since we've gone through the pandemic, but uh, yeah. I could see this being annoying if you're a crew member and you're bebopping around the ship and somebody's like, so, hey, do you live on the ship or do you not live on the ship? And it may be an innocent, innocuous question, but I can imagine if you get that one too many times, you're going to give them the old stink eye, like, of course, I live on the cruise ship. Uh, returning late to the ship can be a headache for you and the staff. Look, it's the old peer runner debate. Should we make fun of peer runners? Should we shame them into compliance? Should you run the peer? Uh, at least from a cruise perspective, they're like, this is a hassle. Now we have to leave later and we have to alter what we do. Uh, it's going to be, you know, it could make uh, other, you know, late to the next port, that kind of thing. Uh, the best rule of thumb, don't run the peer if you don't have to. Pay attention to the time. Now, the reason I got on this kick of uh, should you shame peer runners or not, I, I was I was pretty happy to uh, join in and joking along like, ah, peer runner, peer runner. And I did that on a story and it turned out the story is that there was a fatal car accident that prevented uh, several people from returning to the car to the cruise ship. Uh, the, the people on the cruise ship weren't in the fatal car accident, but somebody died uh, preventing people to get back from the cruise ship. And, you know, would I feel comfortable catcalling uh, somebody on the ground that the only reason they're late is because they were involved Involved in a scenario where there was a fatal car accident, that would give me pause uh, to, uh, you know, shaming those people. And so I did this video, and you can go sound off on it, uh, should you make fun of peer runners? And a lot of people are like, of course you should make fun of peer runners. But again, in my mind, there's that scenario where you don't know uh, exactly why they're late. But anyways, the crew member here says, don't be a peer runner. Well, that makes sense. Up next, many guests save pool chairs and never actually use them. Yes. Uh, being a chair hog, chair saver annoys not only other guests, but also the crew members. This is Cruising 101. If you're not going to use the chair, don't save the chair. I mean, I've seen this countless times where somebody's stuff is on a chair and you go back 45 minutes later and nobody's in the chair and it's still the people's stuff. It's annoying for the crew members because they have to decide whether to remove the people's stuff. Obviously, it's annoying for other passengers because they're like, who are these people that... Yeah, it annoys the crew just the same as it annoys uh, other guests. Don't save chairs. All right, scheduling changes are inconvenience, but don't blame the crew. Look, this is so true right now as cruising restarts. Ports are being rearranged. Ports are being skipped. Uh, embarkation is being delayed. The, a variety of things are happening which will change uh, the original itinerary, the original schedule, and the point is well taken here. Do not take that out on the crew. The person that's bringing you a drink at the bar has no more control over what time the ship leaves or what port the ship goes to. Even the people in customer service, they it's not their call to make. Uh, they are there to be the face of it for you to uh, take on your frustration but uh, remember the person that you're dealing with is somebody that's living on the ship that is signed up to do their job the best they can and that they're not making the rules and so uh, to yell at some customer service person it's 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 crazy. I understand that maybe yelling or, or being uh, snide might be your way of coping with a challenging situation, but you're putting your junk on somebody else who doesn't have any control over it. And uh, you can tell from this message here that the crew, uh, it, it, it bums them out. It hurts their feelings. So uh, remember when you're in these human interactions that they're just that, human interactions. You're human. They're human. Uh, try to treat people the way you'd want to be treated. So... The, I think that's a point uh, well made there. 
Uh, next, you wouldn't usually ask people about their salary on land, so don't do it on board either. Look, we all have this question, right? Cruising is such a weird thing from an ethical perspective. Uh, are these people that are working 11, 12 hours a day without a day off, seven days a week for six, are they being treated fairly? Uh, I think maybe we ask the question so that we can feel more comfortable about it. Are you making enough money? Do you love this job? Is this better than the money that you would make at home? I think a lot of that's on us because we've made some sort of decision to enter into this vacation uh, at atmosphere where we're out there spending our disposable income having a good time and uh, you're looking at these people working hard you know they're not making as much money as people at home would be making and we're trying to justify whether we feel okay about that or not so i would say from the passenger perspective this is what i'd say to the crew member the reason that people ask is we just want to feel good about ourselves that we're not taking advantage of a, a disadvantaged situation and so if somebody tells us oh this is much better than what we could do at home everything is fine then we feel a little better it it's the conundrum, right? It's the thing that everybody has to work through who cruises. Uh, but, you know, I've said this before. Uh, I want to follow whatever uh, tipping guidelines that are out there, whatever the cruise lines say I should do to make everything right. That's what I want to do. But the last thing that I want to do when I go on vacation is be in the middle of some sort of uh, labor negotiation. And uh, it's not up to me to negotiate people's salaries. And so part of it going into it, you just have to get in the mindset that uh, people are voluntarily working these jobs. I am voluntarily going on the cruise. And I really don't have to be concerned with what people are making. And uh, you can tell from the crew members' comments here, they don't really want you to be concerned with what they're making either. Don't ask. Uh, you wouldn't do it at other places. Uh, oddly enough, you'll do it on YouTube, though. I do get questions all the time like, you know, what are you doing? How are you making money? What is this for? You know, that kind of thing. But uh, not on the cruise ship. How about that? All right, sliding into the next one. Passengers should not expect to hang out with the crew in port. Uh, I've never thought that I was going to hang out with the crew. Again, in my mind, uh, you know, they're to, there to do their thing. I'm there to do my thing. And I don't really like to cross the streams because we, we saw how that turned out in Ghostbusters. I'm not really looking to, to cross over. And I'm sure they're not looking to cross over either. Of course, they're going to be nice. They're going to be pleasant. They're going to give you the best service possible. And I think sometimes people could probably mistake that for like, oh, you're making some sort of connection with the crew. And now we're both going to be off the ship at the same time. Maybe we can make that connection off the ship. They're not looking for that. The crew wants to hang out with the crew. It's a against the rules for them to fraternize with the guest and so it puts them in a precarious situation and best not to uh, attempt them or best not to make them have to uh, make that uncomfortable choice to tell you look I can't really hang out with them uh, right here this crew member is saying uh, just let the crew be the crew and uh, you do your thing don't expect to hang out outside the cruise ship. So with that being said, we have one more, and this last one is super hilarious to me. I did not think that this would be on a crew member's list. It involves karaoke. It involves the song they don't want to hear. So in your mind's eye right now, you can even put it in the comments. What's your least favorite song to hear at karaoke? And you would be surprised. It's probably the same one that this crew member says. Have you taken a moment? Do you have it in your head? What is it? Sweet Caroline, bum, 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 we don't want to hear this song. No more, no more. That's right, I've heard Sweet Caroline at karaoke too many times. Please stop the madness. Over my six years, I've heard Neil Diamond's Sweet Caroline at karaoke every single night. Is that your favorite karaoke song? Maybe it's time to move on. Uh, yeah, I tell you what, I, I, every time I hear it at the piano bar, every time I hear it at karaoke, I'm like, ugh. Oh. Yes, we've heard this song a lot. Yeah, Sweet Caroline. Just a lighter side show today on my birthday. Hit the like button for my birthday. Hit this. Am I wearing out my birthday welcome? Okay, let me just uh, give a couple of seconds of commentary. These were interesting to me. I, again, I didn't really think about the uh, upgrade thing. I didn't think about whether you should call him a crew member or a worker. I didn't really think about let's not have the salary conversation, but all of that makes sense. Uh, let me kick the question over to you. Any of these surprise you? What's something else that you would like? For me, I would put don't ever put yell at the crew member. Like that, I would put that on the list. Uh, don't take off the prepaid gratuities. That's a whole nother debate, but that's one of my personal philosophies. Uh, what's something that you could add to that? Leave a comment below. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. Please share your support by hitting the like button. I'm going to put some of them trip candles on your birthday cake, and you're going to end up hyperventilating before you can get your birthday wish in. It could happen. Uh, th this is Tony with La Lita Loca, and until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.